<laughs> All right. And Hello, welcome to the game, Huggers. Oh, Dan, you son of a bitch. Oh. You made my little, I can't work. help it. All right, Dan, you go ahead and do the intro. All right, right so welcome to the Game Huggers here. And the reason we're doing this is because Josh is having a little bit of a video problem. To start off with this week, we've got Connor. Connor, say hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick. And next off, we have Steven. Steven. And his his connection seems to be really poor. We can kind of see him. He's looking at us, but we can't hear him. Actually, uh, I think, yeah, I think the volume's all right. Oh, yeah, there you go. Talk there we go. Enough. What a guy. What a guy. All right. Next off, we've got Lukester. What's new? Oh, shit. Not too much. What's new in the hoodie? <laughs> okay, I am wearing a hoodie. It's so cold out, though. I have to wear a coat. That sounded weird. But no, seriously, I walked to the diner today and like my phone died on the walkover. That's why they call it a diner. Oh, oh wow. God. That's awesome. Uh, what diner? Is right now. That, diner. Where's, the re where's the reset button? Yeah, let's just start over. It's only and now. next <laughs> up, we've got Sarumaru. Sarumaru is here. How's it going? Oh, his volume's very low. We can't hear you, buddy. Bit faint. We can't hear you. Yep. Might want to mess with your mic volume. Or your Kevin volume, or your Steve volume. All right, volume. Doesn't matter. All right we can hear yeah. you. Yeah, we can hear Excellent. you. Yeah, that's all right, Steve how are you guys mug doing? on the screen. Hello? That's Hello. unfortunate. Sucks that it's all cold for you guys. It's a nice 65 degrees over here. What do you want to do? You what are you talking about I'm... cold for all of us, dude. It's like sixty right now. <sighs> this, this this assumes that we don't like the cold. Some of us go to flea markets when it's negative degrees out in shorts and a t-shirt. So oh, fuck that. That doesn't bother me. And finally, we've got Josh. Josh, how's your lip? Um, I don't know, it's a little bit better. <laughs> Got a little bit of a, a little bit of a cracked lip there. Had an issue earlier. Otherwise, I seem to be doing just fine. A bit of a herp. Thank you. Perhaps. Absolutely. So what we're going to be Jump. talking about today are series and franchises in video games that we find to be overrated. So without getting too deep into the topic, this came up because Resident Evil 2's grand remake recently came wow. out. And a few people here felt like the Resident Evil series is a Damn. little bit overrated. Perhaps a little bit of a knockoff of Alone in the Dark. So what I want to do is have whoever wants to get started first... Get started by naming a franchise that you think is a little bit overrated. Apex Unit, Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly a franchise if there's only one game. He said franchise or games. Uh, and the game fact, that, of, the of fact, games. the fact that people aren't taking the non-existent <laughs> art book and <laughs> quality you to it. death with it. It exists. It's a multimedia. Really? It'll be released as a, a, a PDF. It exists in my, <laughs> in my mind. It'll it'll come out once we're all out of unboxing videos to do. Trust you me. See, it, it's actually <laughs> a type of modern art. It's an invisible art book. <laughs> it's, it's the art of imagination. You guys have to. Use oh, God, see, that's that's as bad as the journey was. The friends we made along the way. <laughs> and friends is a terrible, terrible sitcom. So I can imagine how bad that would be if we got uh, Journey involved because. Their their eighty songs not so great, nor was their video game. And it looks Did like Josh has signed off. Yeah, we lost Josh. So what we'll do is start off here. Luke, what's a game franchise you feel is a little bit overrated? Ooh, I'm gonna burn a lot of people here, but probably Metal Gear Solid. Honestly, I was thinking of Metal Gear Solid, and here's the interesting thing about the Metal Gear Solid franchise to I me agree is with that. that it's. A series that is entirely about exposition and story. And if you get really big into this convoluted mess of a plot involving nano machines, patriots, government conspiracies, and Foxhound, well, by gosh, you might be pulled into the franchise. But it becomes a little bit more about storytelling and a little bit less about the stealth gameplay mechanics that were supposed to be the foundation of the franchise. Well, I feel like the Metal Gear Solid games started off very, very well. Going, And I'm not talking about the original two Metal Gears that came out on the MSX, but with PlayStation Metal Gear Solid was a very interestingly put together game. After the second one burned a lot of people and upset a lot of people. And <clears throat> I think the impact of the franchise is huge, but I think the actual quality of the games does vary a little bit. 
what are everyone else's thoughts on Metal Gear? Is it overrated? I think so. You know, I don't, I actually like Metal Gear Solid 2 a lot. That uh, I'm surprised people didn't get into it. I don't. I, I, re I remember there being a big like you know hoopla over it being vastly you know different from the original and honestly if they just didn't have you know raiden or raiden or however you know whatever his name is in there it would have been better but well the other problem was that it was kind of a soft remake of the previous game it was literally well we've created a psycho nano machine based bot that's going to take over the world they kind of recreated the whole concept of you're in an isolated area you have four super villains essentially kind of like the members of Foxhound that you have to defuse, and then a big boss fight at the end. It, it it was a soft remake of the previous game outside of that interesting espionage sequence to start it, and I think people were burned by that along with the fact that absolutely nobody liked Raiden. He was a terrible character, though. Like, let's be real. Yeah. The fact that he got his own game is a travesty. <laughs> and you can believe that people's temperatures were rising when they saw that. Oh, God. Yeah, but it seems like opinions changed a little over the years. Now it's almost like you see people now love Metal Gear Two more, and people hate Metal Gear Four more. It's like they've so, been kind, so of, it's kind of Metal Gear Two kind of developed an Andy Kaufman like reputation because the joke is on the player, right? So it was a game where everyone had played the original Metal Gear Solid, and for the most part, people were very, very impressed and pleased with the overall production of it. And then the second one came out, and everybody finished that game and was pissed off who came in with expectations of it being a sequel to Metal Gear Solid. And I think the Andy Kaufman kind of, the trick is on the audience, ha-ha, I have tricked you. Game is actually not about Metal Gear at all. Uh, you uh, have uh, the Metal Gear, and you know, play a solid snake. Uh, uh, so, what wound up happening was, I think, I think over time, the the prank on the audience became something like, "Wow, Hideo Kojima certainly has balls to be able to pull that kind of a trick on his audience." I I, I, I get that people like that part of it, but the actual game itself was underwhelming. You know, I know the cutscene where you have. Uh, like I didn't play Metal Gear Two, but I know there's this one cutscene where like Ryan's talking to like these a these characters who are like actually like AI, and they're talking yeah. about like surveillance and stuff. Everyone, everyone just circle jerks that online now. They're like, oh, this is what 2018, 2019 is like. Facebook and Google are stealing our info and it say spying on us. Metal Gear Two is therefore an amazing game. So you see, I got to throw, throw the flag on this one a little bit though because. Your intro to that was, I've never played this game. Here's why I'm going to take a shit on it. <laughs> I remember why. I actually, I, I, I have wrote. tried to get into Metal Gear 1 multiple times. Like, three, four. Each time I play it, get a few hours in. I, I just can't. You gotta make it, it to the classic scene where uh, he runs into Snake at the end and he puts on the infinite ammo bandana, because that's totally a thing. There's, there's also the Twin Snakes remake of it, which uses the Metal Gear Solid 2 engine, but is otherwise the original game just remixed with different voice acting. So there's there's a few different ones. Anyone else have thoughts on Metal Gear as a franchise? Is it overrated? Josh? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, you're... Major, I'm a little... You God damn it, I don't know what robotic. that. All right. Well, anyway, I don't know how Metal Gear even made it onto this episode because the whole series is not overrated. It's spectacular. It's up there with some of the best series of all times. I'm not saying every game in the entire series is great by any means, but there are certainly great, great games in, this, in, the, in the series in general. It's weird. Don't even bring it up. Whoever brought that up as a dork. And you can thank Lukester for that one. So, <laughs> I'm a Metal up. Gear 5 fan, so... To, to be fair, he, he, he did start it off with, this is probably going to piss somebody off. So <laughs> That's he, did, he did get what he, what he wanted out of that. And he's been a phantom pain the entire time. But Saramaru, what's a game, <laughs> franchise, or series that you feel is a little bit overrated, if not a lot overrated? Smash Brothers. I agree. <laughs> that just, I just think there's... I, really I don't know. Hmm. I, I don't like how people try to always lump it in as a fighting game, and they're like, oh, it's a really unique fighting game. It's not a fucking fighting game. It's a platformer. 
where you get to it's just an see amazing each other up. party game, but I agree. It's yeah, it's one of those games that I always liked when you would you could actually get four people together and you know yeah. it's basically like locally. It, yeah, but... Nintendo characters beating the crap out of each other. But you know, I the best way I've ever seen it summed up was this uh this one guy had an ad that he was like he put together, it was supposed to be like a just for fun Smash Brothers thing, and he got people that reached out to him that were like why aren't you using official tournament rules and you know all this stuff? And he's like, dude, this is just for fun. I'm not going to give you three hundred dollars for being the best fucking Princess Peach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like the the, me the melee. Like, I think melee really started it, but that just the people involved with it are so unbearable. I, I, I do think mm -hmm. this, though, tied to it not being a fighting game. It's not a traditional fighting game. The same way that Power Stone isn't a traditional fighting game. And, and there's a few other ones that I'd put in that same category. I, I don't think that it's... I, I think that it is an absolutely hugely overrated series. I don't think that it's bad, but I think people get way too caught up bad. in the it's tournament fine. aspect of it. And that's that's kind of what, what stinks about it. And it it's, yeah, it's absolutely massively overrated mm -hmm. because... It's it's still huge, and there's still freaking people playing the GameCube one, you know, 18 there's years later. Tournaments for the GameCube one still. Oh yeah, yeah, but dude, you enter you enter one of those and like plug that nose because you know every hair you've gotten there is getting. Oh god, tweak! Oh, there is god. like a um, there is a Facebook like notification for like a smash bros 20 local club and the organizers literally like guys i know this please is basic shower. Hygiene, please shower <laughs> she shower. just like oh. quite once every two days it was like oh god when i was and in when i was in school so it was true though it was like the heyday of of melee and i went to play like you know with some other people at school they had a thing set up and the guy I got stuck in line smelled like straight up onions and cat piss. <laughs> like, oh my God. There is no, oh my no God. way. <laughs> there is well, listen, no way. The onions, and cat, listen, the onions and cat piss deodorant they sell at Dollar Tree lives up to the name. There was absolutely wait, wait. raw no onions. <laughs> onion that makes a difference. It was, it was onion soup. Uh, no, I dude, I wish it was onion soup. I really wish it was, but there was no way this guy had seen anything close to water in about a week. <laughs> All right, so Esteban, what is a gaming franchise that you find to be a little bit, if not a lot, overrated? Well, I, I'm gonna break the rules a little bit. I'm gonna talk about something that I thought was overrated for a long time, and now I've kind of come to accept them and appreciate them more. So the Mega Man series, and it could be Mega Man or Mega Man X. It's very so, broad. Right, so I loved those games, the first no, few. Uh, and by then, the way, Lukester, it would be very broad if it was Mega Woman, but it's Mega Man. Okay, there's Splash Woman though, Mega Man 9. Ah, dude. And so, <laughs> you know, it's like Ellie. when some... Yeah, we, Dan should just be muted at a certain point. <laughs> but um, there should be like a like a, a rationing of the puns and stuff. But um, you know, in any heyday, when something is in its prime and you get tons of it, and at a certain point you're like, all right, whatever, and you get so I don't know, you get jaded. And it's happened with so many genres, or it's happened with so many different eras in gaming and stuff, and it's only later that some people, like me perhaps, really appreciate what we had and things I overlooked or dismissed at the time. So I got, I guess, burnt out on Mega Man a long, long time ago, and in playing some of the remakes or the newer, whatever you want to call them, re reboots or kind of going back to the original formula, it made me revisit some of these old games I haven't played in forever and realizing i don't know realizing that there are some wonderful moments if not the entire game but some really great moments there and i was like wow i totally dismissed these titles completely and only now do i see it so i've kind of come full circle on that so i went from loving mega man hating it sick of it because it was just recycling the same old stuff and now i'm back to appreciating it again but um I always so, love the 
classic series Mega Man stuff. The, the classic really series of Mega Man stuff was good to a point. The problem is, yeah. from a gameplay standpoint, once they added in the element of the charge yeah. shot, that took away a lot of the rock, paper, scissors mechanic that the name Rock, rock Man is based on away from some of the boss battles. The rock, other thing about the later Mega Man I like that it gives me more choice to music, to though, man. It wasn't Rock, Pamper, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Yeah, it was, it was Rock and Roll. It was Rock and Roll. Rock and Roll. It's some trouble. Yeah, but, Rock and Roll, but, Bass Treble. It ran off of a Rock, Paper, Systems engine, though, guys. Come on. No, I mean, it was it was like Wasn't that, Alex but, Kidd? You know, the, the charge shot was... Nothing I don't think it was, is. like, game-breaking. I mean, the you know, it was like the slide. It was kind of cool to have. Yeah. But yeah, and, and the slide part I didn't mind as much, but I will say when you start to get to like, oh, I have to fight Clown Man, what kind of sick fuck is Dr. <laughs> Wily that he made Clown Man? To, I mean, I that, game was that, one, game. that game was the one that introduced bomb jumping too, which I thought was kind of weird at the time. But by the, time we, by the time we flipped back over to the 8-bit games and we got to the 8-bit style Mega Man 9 and you have Galaxy Man and you have all of these really interesting ideas and innovations in gameplay that have been come up over the past 20 years since they had made a game in that particular style. All of a sudden, Mega Man 9 felt fresh and new in the same way that something like Shovel Knight did to a certain degree. Right. And that they took an existing though, formula. And it's good that you brought up Shovel Knight because that's a game that it was very popular. It seemed, anyway, it seemed to me that it was popular. It wasn't just a small little niche. It seemed like a lot of people were enjoying that. That's and super was, popular. Yeah, and when I was playing it, I was like, this is fantastic. Why is it so fantastic? And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's what I it's, know it had. A, yeah, it's the good parts of, you know, everything that games exactly. were back then. Exactly. All those mechanics kind of like uh, yep. really Ooh. well put together and executed really well. And yeah, so that deserves a lot of credit um, for being able to pull that off. Yeah. So uh, what, about the, what about Mega awesome. Man X? What about Mega Man X? As Mega a, Man X is not as good a series as the classics. I think yeah. X1 yeah. and X4 not. are absolute masterpieces. Right. Um, X2 is pretty good. X3 yeah. I think is kind of bland and 5 and 6 I just I just don't want to talk about that. Any, yeah, anything yeah. after X4 is not even worth playing. Right. So, so, so I'm going to piss Saru Maru off and mention that Mega Man Powered Up looks incredibly stupid with its chibi art. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I like it and hate it actually. So like I like the fact that it's a redo of Mega Man. But I wish they would have redone it in the way that they did Mega Man 8. Or sorry, Maverick Hunter. Sorry, sorry, sorry. They, they kind of like did when they did, uh, what was it, Rockman and Rockman World, scary. Mega World. Wily Wars? Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah. Oh, Wily Wars yeah, yeah. is pretty fun. Some people shit on it. Um, but I like the version of Mega Man 3 in it. But like each, it's kind of weird because you know it's by the same team. Each version, 1, 2, and 3, have their own like individual differences. And the mm. remakes like mm. um mega man 3 plays great mega man 1 is pretty good just has some slowdown 2 is a whole bunch of like little issues like music issues um there's this one section wiley stage one where it's like you have to use platforms to get up i don't know if you guys remember that or not but you have to actually squeeze in more platforms in the genesis version i think because it's like mm. My, just my wasn't feeling on well. playing Wily Wars is that I'd rather play all of those games on the NES. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. with you on that. Yeah. The music is Same. even better on the NES. I don't know what they did with the Genesis music, but well, they're the, not utilizing that the, card. The Genesis or, sorry, sound, the, yeah, the Genesis sound sound card. ship had its own weird well, issues. Yeah, yeah well, but that's not, I, Unless you were Yuzo Koshiro, getting the Genesis to sound good was a huge challenge. Everybody was mm -hmm. just kind of like, especially Western developers were like, I don't yeah. know, I can make the sound with my arms. I know. It just sounds like robo parts. Yeah, and that's being generous. Have you ever seen... <laughs> we're going to piss off a lot of people because, of course, there's amazing <laughs> music on the Mega yeah, Drive and Genesis. There is. I However, Yuzo Koshiro is... only scored so many games. Yeah, there's a huge <laughs> crap to quality ratio there, and you can blame a lot of the developers who didn't really know what they're doing, but still. Oh. You know, honestly, though, the, the, the music has its ups and downs for that. Mega Drive digitized voice has never been good in any fashion. No, no. <laughs> yeah, everything's super muffled and weird. Except for Sega. 
Yeah, for some reason, Sega comes in like crystal clear every time. That's oh, in the comic zone. zone. Comic and it's zone funny too voice. because comic that's true. Yeah, there kid. are a few games that have have good voices, and uh, there was like a fan homebrew of Street Fighter Champion Edition that they did with like redid colors and redid mm. voices, and it's like holy yep. shit, this was capable of doing that, and they released the shit that we got. You know, it's like uh, yeah, so someone well, I mean, better. That's like I, the I'm comparison sure. of. Sorry, that's yep. like like the comparison better, of when, when when mm-hmm. when Championship Edition came out on the PC Engine. It had better music, better audio, yeah. better, better like audio, voices, but... better graphics, mean more color, and everything was better about it than the Genesis well, version. So let's, obviously, right. whatever. There would be less elephants in Dalsum stage. It couldn't go as quickly. There wasn't a turbo mode, so there were some things that the Genesis version did do better than the PC Engine one. But yeah. tied to Saramaro's comment about people doing that, I'm sure you've probably seen some of the arcade color swaps and sprite swaps yeah. people have done for certain ones. So like Golden Axe and yep. some of the early Genesis that, yeah. games, people have uh, made those look far better than the original releases by just making a few palette changes yep. and a handful of other adjustments. Far less well. brown. Yes, yeah. which really is the Genesis' <laughs> problem. And, and we could go on and on and on about that. But let's find another game series that people feel are overrated. Josh, what do you think is an overrated series? Well, okay, so I kind of want to go, and this is, the, okay, so one, one little comment about Mega Man. I thought Mega Man was very overrated while it was coming out on the NES, like when I was in oh, the uh, yeah. when I was yeah. in the NES Turbo Graphics Super Nintendo phase, that era, like when I was a big fan of that, I loved every Castlevania game that came out. Mario Three came out, I was on top of that. But the Mega Man games that seemed to come out every six months to a year, like I remember when Three came out and then Four was already being developed. And then yeah, five mm-hmm. out, I was like, Jesus Christ! And then I, I felt like I, that with Four, Five, and Six. I would go. Yeah, rent I agree. I go rent them. and I'm like, this is the same shit. Just like like sprite swaps and like changing of the levels a little bit, but otherwise it is the same damn thing. I just thought it was super overweight, overrated and I was getting real sick of it. Yeah. And that was like was that. Cap- the old Game Boy yeah. and Mega Man games, like the black and white ones definitely mm-hmm. have that issue. Cause they're like mixed and match versions of the NES ones, but they have like, I mean, if you're playing like a real Game Boy, which you guys all grew up with, you know, you got like the slowdown, you got the, yeah. blur- the blurry yeah. screen. It can be harder to play. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that they would just mix and match levels from different Mega Man games, so the rock, paper, scissors mechanic again got lost. <laughs> it was uh, so bad. Rock, paper, scissors, what, yeah. Stepping away from Mega Man before Dan has an aneurysm, um, <laughs> I'd like to talk <laughs> about the current gen of stuff, and this is a lot related to what I people that I talk to online or just my kids in general and their friends, and that's what constitutes a video game nowadays. And it's the weirdest thing. Now, Minecraft is pretty unique and pretty incredible in how creative people can get with it. I won't say it's an overrated series or game. It is, like, one of the best-selling games of all times. Things like Minecraft, things like Wii Sports, I get it. I understand why Angry everyone Birds. put it. Okay, Angry Birds I don't get. But, like, everything <laughs> else everything else is, like, there's a purpose for it. But what's going on right now with Fortnite, and I tried. I've played it. I've I've listened to my kids talk about it. My um, 11 year old son has been playing it for like eight months now, mm-hmm. and he has gotten so much allowance from chores that he has put into the game. And I think his character he said his character cost him 160 dollars. And I'm like, what can he do? And he showed me all the dances and all the different costumes and the skins and stuff. And I'm like, dude, that is ridiculous. I can't believe dollars like physical money, like real money. Yeah. Yeah, anytime he gets a twenty dollars for chores or goes out and shovel, he was like all about doing dishes and chores, shoveling and all kinds of stuff when he got here. And I'm like, what do you what do you want? He's just like, just give me a credit card, man. I gotta I gotta do this. I gotta do my Whoa. thing. Gotta get some skins. He's he's on this. He's on the Switch. He's on the Xbox One. And he's got a PC version and a, and a tablet version. All the same character that he can use on all the different things, and it's kind of cool. Um, and I've watched him play. And I'm like, what is so unique and what is so special about this game? I don't get the attraction to it like at there all. There isn't. There's I don't nothing. Know if I'm just old that is the most what overrated get. ridiculousness. I don't get it. But but okay. So the game is it's a battle royale. You can do teams yeah. or you can do battle royale style. You get dropped in the middle of this map. A hundred people. The last sole survivor wins, and that's it. The more kills you get, the more experience you get. Um. Buying stuff in the game literally does nothing for you. You don't buy items, or, or I guess you credit. do get items. To it's the all... game's credit, though, I'd say. So, 
I mean, I have to say, like, again, I don't. You can find, win. Don't, you can win. You can win by not paying any money at all. You can yeah. pay. You can. The game is free technically. There's like advanced versions and seasons that you can buy season passes to and get all these skins and maps and stuff like that. But you don't technically need to spend a single penny. Yeah, and you can still be, that's you can still be like good at it. Yeah. cosmetic stuff, isn't it? At that, it point? is. It's all cosmetic. It's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, but you do pretty much get dropped in as, with a dude with a shirt and a backpack, and that's so it. So that's, that's how freaking uh, un player unknown battlegrounds was when that came. It out. says same thing. It's not, dude, I was watching my kids that's play thing, that, it's and like, I thought it was. I thought that was the same game. I thought it was yeah, the same thing. But it's like player unknown battlegrounds had the the drop on this, and they just continued to release this buggy piece of crap that you know like had all kinds of problems it's like mm -hmm. well, no shit, somebody's gonna take your idea and do it well yeah gen right. z and here people love the idea pumg like people my age but although gaming pcs like my laptop and chat and you guys on like that shit's becoming more popular <laughs> but oh yeah pumg was a buggy mess the only console I launched on was the Xbox. I'll have to post the link in the Discord chat later, but there's there's this YouTuber named CropCat, and he makes like these really good compilation videos. It's just a compilation of like clips of PUBG on the original Xbox. It looks like a like a Dreamcast game. It's just wow. really, really rough. There was there I, used, I, did you just I, say Gen I, Z? I, 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 did you just say Gen Z here? That's right. Jesus Christ, Luke, you're the son I wish I never had. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're like, after the DNA test, I can't deny it, so we'll just go from there. But one thing about Fortnite that can definitely be improved on uh, would be, you know, in a potential sequel, Five Night, which uh, could, could do quite a bit more. Wow. No. Oh, man. Oh, man. The, uh, unacceptable. The, 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 unacceptable. The setup for that was bad. <laughs> the, the, uh. Did you see his thing in the discord earlier his, his yes joke, his joke yeah. like yes. Eight, eight oh, paragraphs to set up it was just no, yeah, no, I see. The, French, right. the french fries thing and then the french fries. <laughs> yeah. so, I, love, it, like. I have to say i love the french fry thing because usually you can spot his stuff from a mile away but that one i was like where's this going and then bam we saw, oh, you, you, walk, we saw you walking into that joke taking your pants down like this is happening i don't know what's happening but it's obviously uh. happening so you could say with Fortnite, I, I mean, I think what's happening is it just got lucky. I mean, maybe it wasn't luck. I'm, I'm underplaying it. But there is an element of sometimes, no matter how much a publisher wants a game to be popular, it's not going to hit the mainstream and be super ridiculously popular. And mm -hmm. Fortnite just happened to be that game that became a blockbuster. And maybe it... It's nothing about its actual merit or quality. It's, I mean, it has executed some things well, but maybe it's just partly friggin' luck and good for them. I mean, they got lucky, but there's nothing magical or inherently amazing about it. And so if we're gonna try to look for it, we're not gonna find that necessarily. It's fun. Kids obviously love it. I'm a high school teacher. Kids were ridiculously addicted to it. And I didn't even try to fight them on it. Like I did, I felt myself, I was going to go into yeah. old person mode. Like, what are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. And then I remembered how um, I actually was lucky enough to win a Game Boy. And I was trying to play that Game Boy in high school as much as I could. And I was like, I can't really criticize these kids because I was trying to do the same thing when I was in high school. It's just like, you want to have fun. Mm -hmm. It's it's instant gratification. Um, and I want to say to its credit, I like that. The, the generating money is totally the cosmetic stuff. And I talk yep. to my my uh, my daughter's friends and all that, and they talk about it. And yeah, it's just like Josh, it's just like you said, they want to spend money on it. They know that it's just this virtual pair of shorts and it, they don't care. You know, I'm like, all right, you know what? As long as they're not being duped into it or tricked or in some way, and they're not, you know, they're not, they're it's, not, it's, just, they're... it's so it's so weird to me to see the change where it's like when they introduced the the Xbox avatar when they ripped off the me for that and you had to get the giant you know update and they were charging money for clothes for that and everybody flipped shit like you know I'm not paying for right. this right. you know it's like that was ten years ago and right. you know, suddenly it went to take my money for virtual yes. pay please. Please offer me more opportunities to spend money on total garbage. And even before that, Connor, if you remember Second Life, there were people oh, right. who were buying 
custom avatar skins right. and clothes and but all people would make it right and, like yeah, in second life it. it was crafted yeah. so it was kind of like the etsy of the virtual world and yeah. It, yeah. yeah it was like somebody yeah. had to actually yeah. go in and make that it's yeah. like yeah. it's like it's the etsy of the virtual world you know somewhere there's some lady in california who has no job and a serious <laughs> drug problem <laughs> right who's making your second life clothes right yeah by the way is second life still going i i want to they I want to believe it is somewhere. It's still I mean, going. I, yeah, a lot of people. That, they got you just on imagine it. there's always like lots of Australians in there because that's what I remember about this. It's just like, hi there, mate. You're playing Second Life too. My real life is bad. I got bit by a snake. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's always funny to see like the 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 groups that gravitate towards certain games. Like I remember when we when RuneScape came out and it got mm. overrun by Brazilians. Oh, yeah. Really? Wow. There was yeah, like Brazilian of them. Yeah, it was. Oh, God, shut wow. up, man. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Okay, we should set a five pun rule. Thank so. you. That's very generous. First, I, I like it. Dan has already Dan, so, gone over Dan, like, the no, five. Like so make sure you ration them. Hey, we'll give you half a dozen. How about that? Yeah, we'll give you half yeah. a dozen puns. You have to ration them throughout the whole episode. Ooh, that's fair. It's just going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have ones I didn't get to use earlier. So yeah, that's not fair because Dan's already done like ten of them, and, and unfortunately, no pun in ten was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll see myself out. I'm sorry. Oh, um, no, but uh, seriously, I, one other thing I wanted to mention too about Fortnite and those types of games, like I mentioned Minecraft and Fortnite. Um, I really like that one. Um, Jesus, it was on the tip of my tongue a second ago. That one oh, racing Ro Roblox. game. No. Oh, Roblox? Oh, Rocket. Oh, uh, Rocket. Roblox is just Rocket. Minecraft for like seven-year-olds. Roblox yeah, exactly. is okay. Yeah, I, I, do. And I have twins that are seven years old. That what it's called? <laughs> You're talking about Rocket uh, League, right? Rocket League is a good one. I, I do enjoy what watching oh, kids play Rocket League. It's a mix League. of like okay. racing and sports. It's pretty inventive. On it was um, yeah, like I like Fort play, Fortnite. It's a cross play on everything you with my on, like, uh, system. With my six year old and my eleven year old playing Fortnite, and they play. You know, they play against each other or on the same maps when they're playing with the Switch handheld version on the Xbox and the TV and stuff like that. It's kind of cool to watch them do that. Um, but when my my oldest son, he's or my second oldest son, he's seventeen, and he was talking about um, Fortnite and stuff like that, and I'm like, I sat and we talked. We talked about it. On Saturday this last weekend, I sat for about two hours trying to figure this game out with them. And I'm like, after afterwards, I came out and I'm like, you know, the result of this all is that this game has no depth. There's nothing to it, and you guys are just hooked on it. And then Xander was like, um, my my 17 year old, he's like, well, what kind of games do you like? What games do you like that are so deep and so so giant and so amazing? And I, mm. so I'm like, later that night, I was playing King of Fighters 14 on the uh, PS2, and he was watching. He's like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, this is a yeah, fighting game. Or... And he's like, all you do is fight one on one. All it is is that. And I'm like, well, you got to master each character. You try to figure out all the moves. Each character has dozens of moves, and they're all different. And obviously, King of Fighters, so there's like 900 characters that you can pick up. <laughs> you know, it's not like that. But you know what I mean? And I'm like, this is deep. This is awesome. And then Xander just goes in this big spiel about, like, well, there's hundreds of different items that people can, you can find different types of weapons. You can find different players online that you can match up with and play against. And he's like, there's more depth to Fortnite than there's to King Fighters, and I was so insulted. I'm you just like, like oh, <laughs> "You're grounded, kid." You know, like you need to out. you need to grab him and tell him in no uncertain terms that what he plays is the duo file of games. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's dude. That's not nice. It's not, but I know he's gonna see it. Yeah, he's probably watching his 4K 65 inch TV right now. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, yeah, that's right. If he's, on, if he's on the 4K, I got to do that then. <laughs> <laughs> the quality is so good on this stream. Um, but yeah. no, I, th I thought that like, was funny. And that's honestly, those are the kind of things that I would talk about is being overrated is like nowadays, it's those kind of games that aren't even really games. I, I mean, those and like MMOs, I always had the hardest time with that. There was right. a few, yeah. There's a few MMOs, you know, MMORPGs or whatever that I really got hooked on and I really yeah. thought were fun for a time being. Um, but then they just grew old or, or something just happened with them. But some people that just really religiously love those kinds of games, um, I, I would always argue that they're basically just graphical glorified AOL chat rooms. 
raids for the most yes, part. Yes, that's like, exactly what they are. We and do that, have the that's raids, why people would go into them is it was you hang out with your friends in the same way that people like maybe some people in this chat hang out in the Discord. That was their Discord. They would sit in World of Warcraft and stand in the same position for days on end, never showering. <laughs> so, <laughs> One of the guys I went to school with was actually like that. It was, you know, we, we tried to convince him to come and, and eat from time to time. Oh, and he'd, no. he'd be too busy playing I, World I, of I, Warcraft. I, and it was it was just hard to watch, you know, that happen to somebody, though. I, yeah. I have a friend who was really big into Final Fantasy XI, and we're talking 10 or 11 years ago. And he would, you know, m like talk to people oh. in the game and whatnot. And again, it was just a big virtual chat room for him for all intents and purposes, because in Final Fantasy XI, you can't actually fight uh, enemies and kill them. You, you just sit around and, and converse. So uh, allegedly, um, after having been on Final Fantasy XI for several years, he went to live with some Wookiee woman in like uh, Wyoming. So that's the oh, story. Geez. So is this better or worse the game. Than, is this better or worse than say someone like Ark now who still plays <laughs> Final Fantasy XI religiously? <laughs> It's 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 a challenge, but um, I think the gentleman you're talking about had a, a happier ending, so I don't know. Well, this is better if if you're into that, I guess. What living in Wyoming with yeah. monkey women, yeah, yeah, and, and celebrating not? light day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Connor, I don't think we went over your choice for what you feel is an overrated game franchise. We didn't. We so Dan, I, Dan, Dan, I, Dan, Dan, I think stuff, is somebody at your door behind you, Dan? Someone, no. was at your, someone was at your door. Someone was at, yeah, someone was at your glass. Your, there was like a shadow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was somebody standing Dan's there. Glass one. door. Oh, Sorry. Well, okay. Right anyway. That was weird. Hopefully, it was, was nothing really important. Weird. Oh, yeah. I just saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'd be freaked oh. out, man. Yeah, like, look at my little icon like, there. Yeah, well, yeah, you're like you're gonna see it there. Uh -huh. <laughs> there was somebody standing there for like a minute, and they were like just staring yeah, at it, and then they like walked just away. Stand in there, and then it was just like whoop, like sideways. Mm -hmm. They didn't walk backwards. It was just like whoop. What is, so he's so like floated. It was like floating. Yeah, it was like floating. It's like an exit yeah. like stage right in you know, a British <laughs> comedy. Like, <laughs> can you do you mind no, no, no. like just opening that door just to see? Like, yeah, there's a certain Which Nicholas look? Wolf. Go look. <laughs> <laughs> At least while we're on, like, on camera, so that, like, in case something happens, there's eyewitnesses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he don't care. He's just like, whatever, man. Uh, candy Gram. Gram. Uh, uh, pizza man. Uh, candy man. Nick, candy is man. that you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine, get raped, then. We don't care. Yeah. Do it off camera, pal. <laughs> just try to be your friends. Who's, who's up now? Was it Connor? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be me. I you know, I've been racking my you know, what's left in there at least trying to think of you know, something that, you know, I could say is overrated. I wanted to say Popful Mail because I know X <laughs> Element watches this. I wanted to say <laughs> Peace cuz I know we got a bunch of PC Engine fans. But in all honesty, I I think I got to go with Legend of Zelda on this one. Oh. Zelda. So is it the modern? Is it the mm. modern era, or where are you gonna? I'm wondering where it, you're gonna draw this line, or are you gonna it, say from the it, beginning? Not every Zelda game after game. Link to the Past, pretty much. Right? It, it's weird because I I love Link to the Past, but then my favorite game in the series is Majora's Mask. Oh my god, get Agreed. out! Agreed. Oh, and that's a very yeah. different. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a very different game. Yeah, and that's not like a, you know a choice that you're gonna get for most people. But I really like you know at the time it was like they they took it and they went real dark with it, and I like that. But for all the love that, like, you know, everybody says Ocarina of Time's best game ever, and you know, it's constantly like number one on all the lists or whatever. It's like the game they made right before that was 10 times better. The best part of Wait, what? Ocarina is definitely like the great dungeons, and there's a lot of them. Uh, but Majora, other than having less dungeons, I think Majora improved on almost every other single. Whoa, 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 you're saying. Oak Arena and Majora. Majora. Majorly Majora. Tony Tony Majora's last. <laughs> All I'm saying is, man, have you played Link to the Past? Like, have yeah, you? I, right. I just, no, I'm, I'm being Luke. Have you oh. sat down and have you played Link to the Past? He wasn't even born. 
That's I like, like a- Link to the Past a lot, but I do like Majora more. I mean, I'm I'm not oh. disagreeing. <laughs> you guys, come through I, the same. I can't even get into the 3D, so so I'm stuck in the past. So I can't comment. I can't either. So I'm like, I, I appreciate I appreciate the modern things. I even on my Wii, which I know dates me too, but that's a modern system for me. Um, yeah. So I, I like all the yeah. Post PlayStation Two shit. Even play PlayStation Two still feels. Like a modern system yeah. to me. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah, I usually draw the line at the Dreamcast for that. Yeah, yeah. Dreamcast is a great gaming machine. So I, I'm going to go over a few Zelda games I find to be overrated. Yeah. Um, and we were to, since you brought up the Wii in particular. So Twilight Princess, which was mm. also on the GameCube as well, to me was just kind of a soft remake of Ocarina of Time with a Wolf. Mm. It tried to be a That's more. That's not necessarily a bad more, thing. Though. No, but it, but it, but there wasn't enough new to it. But when I right. played Twilight Princess, it felt like I've played this game before. Right. It it didn't feel new enough beyond the wolf transformation, which is the kind of thing that I I'm sorry I'm not a furry I, I don't get into that. <laughs> so that one didn't impress me very much. Skyward Sword went a little bit too far with the waggle control and things of that nature. Skyward Sword, wiggle, wiggle. Skyward Sword was the worst in terms of hand holding too. It feels like they basically mm. just guided you from start to to finish in the whole time. Like I I tried playing that game at the insistence of a friend, and at the beginning you're supposed to get the sword and free this bird behind these wooden slats, and you get down there. The sword is the only item I have, and the freaking thing pops up, and it's like maybe you should use the sword to free him. It's like, well, no shit. It's the only item I can <laughs> use. Oh. And it just, it, I, I miss like, you know, going back to Link to the Past or the, or the first one or the second one where you actually had to look around for stuff. And I mean, it was the exploring was. Yeah. And, and that is because things have just changed as far as who's playing the games and the frustration level of like a typical, I don't know, kid or adult who's going to be playing it. But I know what you're saying. There's something oh, no, no, lost. Just, There's look, something lost when you don't just do trial and error and just and get frustrated. At look, at Breath of, look at Breath of the Wild, though. That was a great game. And it went back yeah. to the core, you know, at the exploration. It's mm-hmm. not like, yeah. you know, yeah. hey, here's a little fucking arrow on the map. Get it <laughs> right. and, and, and because Breath of the Wild went about doing the whole, I guess, design of the game differently and left it as a big open world that, you know, you've I've literally seen people just run straight for Ganon's castle for all intents and purposes after the tutorial and beat the game in like 40 minutes. What? Really? I didn't know it was possible. Yeah, I guess it's all about the cooking. It's got to be it's right it's about because in German version, you can skip cutscenes, yeah, and that will save you a few minutes. And seriously, I'm like, I've actually seen speedrunners go ahead and do this, and they're wow. always playing the German version. Um, but yeah, I mean, the game can be beaten in like 45 minutes or something ridiculous. That's but funny. here's the thing. That's, oh, again, funny. but then you miss out on so much awesomeness. So but that, if, if yeah. you're playing it, if you're playing it solely for the speed aspect of it, yeah. you know, it's, that was what I liked yeah. about, you know, Breath of the Wild too, is that it's like, no matter what your play style is for this, there's something in there that you can in, enjoy in the right. game. Right. You know, it's not like we're, we're not forcing you to, you know, explore everything like in the old school. We're not forcing you to play this, you know, this linear path of the... Right of the new school it's here you go choose have fun right and that's something that should be followed up in, in future games and not just the zelda franchise but a lot of games could really learn from that allowing folks to uh save or appreciate things or quickly get through maybe i, I, I thought mario odyssey did an okay job of that honestly because they just they put so many of those moons in there where it's like you know even if you're, you know, basically blind, you're still going to be able to go in and pick up about half a dozen without doing all that much. Yeah. It I actually really more. needed some DLC, I think. It had more moons than my box of Lucky Charms. No, 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 that's no, the count. Count. no games. No Bad. games need DLC. None. Zero. If they want to do more Mario Odyssey, they over to the next episode. Should, yeah, they should just do Mario Odyssey 2 if they want to do more things to it. I would rather right. that than stupid DLC. To be, so, I, I'd also oh I'd they put the time into making like a new game though, rather than like you know, hey, here's an expansion pack. Yeah, I think that's what Josh is saying. They should just do a 
whole new game if they're going to go into yeah but but it's like if, if all you've got is a couple of additional you know levels or something yeah. else, with dropping yeah. that out there and it's like you know hey yeah. five, five bucks and you know here's another couple hours of you know whatever so Your so tied to some of our discord conversations josh and this is something that brings something to mind you brought up you don't like dlc at all back I don't. a few years back Dragon okay. Quest IX had DLC, and if you went onto a little online eShop, you could buy weapons from previous Dragon Quest games. There were additional maps and things, and you were not using real-world currency. You were instead using currency you had obtained in the game. So it was downloadable content, but it wasn't downloadable content that required you actually paying money for. The downside wow. is this service is now offline. In cases yeah. like that, where there's additional DLC that's available, it's downloadable content that's added to your game, do you like or dislike it if it does not require additional physical money to purchase? I mean, yeah, okay, so like fixes and like patches or, or additional content that's, you know, given to you, I guess that's okay, but... So, so you're okay with DLC as long as it's not for monetary purchase. Is that accurate? I, I guess so, but I'd much rather the game was just complete when it was See, released that, with everything they intended to put on it. Even if it's something like, hey, we could do this six months from now, I'd much rather just a new game comes out or a new expansion that's sort of like a PC expansion where it's like a box physical, like, hey, look, I got this second half of whatever. It's the Master Quest now, you know, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Listen, I'm not a fan of DLC because say you take your Switch and it's 15 years in the future and you're like, I'm going to pull out right, right, my yeah. Switch and play out some games. And it's like, oh, shit, now I need this. Oh, that's right. That's what that was DLC. And it's like, well, the server's down now. down. It doesn't exist anymore. So it's just poof, gone air. And I understand Nintendo will come out with like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or Mario Deluxe or, you know, like things that will be everything, including and all the DLC and all the characters and everything you can purchase um, later on. I just, I just don't like it. I just don't, I'm not, I'm not into it. I want the whole thing now. I want it. They're going to release it. Just give me it all. You know, I, I'm with you on I a certain all. part of that because I remember when my buddy bought uh, one of the Katamari games, I think it was for the PS2, and they had four things of DLC on that that were already on the disc, and you just had to pay to oh, unlock them. Unlock it. But, they, but they shipped yeah. with the yeah, they shipped with the game, and it's like That's really the worst. So Soul Calibur mm -hmm. 4, Namco was good at doing that. Soul Calibur 4 had a bunch of extra, I think, Star <clears throat> Wars characters you could pay for, but they were already on the disc. So oh, all man. you were doing was doing a save file that unlocked it. That's shitty. Yeah, that's, that's another. Another oh, bad, bad DLC thing was there was some early uh, Xbox 360 Namco RPG, and it wasn't the Tales of game. I, I have the game. I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head. But Namco, literally for like ten bucks, you could skip ten levels in the game to level up your character quicker. Really? Oh my god! That's really? Good. <laughs> and they intentionally made the game very grindy What's to it? make yes, it worth of course. it. Wow. Uh, what was that called? Was it Eternal Sonata? I'm yes. To think. Okay. There wow, was, really? That's crazy. Because I remember it was what was it? Oblivion when that came out, where you were you could pay money for like horse armor that didn't do anything <laughs> other than the fact that it was like ooh horse armor, you know. And now you've got josh's kids dropping 20 bucks a week on you know, cosmetic <laughs> dabbing and oh that's the worst yes no. you know, i, hey, I, I my... can't even fault them for that because i done i'm I getting the sidewalks are that with a game that's different right. though because you don't need any like esteban mentioned earlier you don't need any of that shit to play the game you can play the base game with your fucking basic ass character and you'll still do fine but nobody wants to play the basic ass character. They want to get like outfits yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I used to play a game called Yogurting, and it was all about that. Like you didn't have to buy any any special items, but I liked having like all the cool like clothes and like custom colored weapons and shit. And I spent the money for that. Yeah, so that, was kind of the, that was kind of the draw of uh, what was it, Hearthstone too, wasn't it? Where it's like you don't have to spend money to to make these decks of cards or whatever, but you can you can buy cards. Yeah, there were a lot of yeah, little games too like that. that were like that too. Tied to MMOs, there's a lot of pay to win type games like that as well, where it's kind of a similar situation. I think I've brought this up once or twice before, but years ago when I first started working for the company I work for now, and we're going back to like 2008, um, I had a coworker who tried to get me to play a game called Shiaea, which was some Korean <laughs> MMORPG. Are they all Korean? <laughs> that, uh, that, that had a, basically a pay to win mechanic. And you could manually, tediously level your character up fairly, or you could buy points. 
See, that's a problem in the sense that it's purposely designed to be so grindy, it takes away any kind of fun or takes yeah, away a lot of the fun. Too. Yeah. So that that's and that's why I was Sarah Mara, like it, it's like if they don't destroy the actual game and people are willing to pay for stuff, I'm okay. And the same thing with the DLC, I have no problem with paid DLC. It's a separate issue if that's going to get lost. If that's not going to be preserved or be able to play in the future, that does suck. But if I love a game and I can get an extra level or if I can get a little bit more content and it's not going to be a huge endeavor for the developers and they didn't purposefully leave it off, and I think that's the fine line. And Josh, you're right. If they purposefully hold back content and it's a, a money-making, evil kind of decision because they don't really they're not giving you what a fair amount is in the game itself and there uh, wasn't it like and i don't even follow these games but wasn't it like there was some was it street fighter there was some game that was really horrible with like slowly putting out these characters and street making pay for yeah, it. street fighter yeah, fighter 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 fighter. the whole fight money system yeah that that is totally scamming yeah, right, but, if, but if, if you look at if you look at the history of Capcom over the last ten or fifteen years, it's twenty if, thirty if any, years. It's yeah, bad. it's like if if anybody was going to do shit like this, where it's like you know they were going to scam the money out of you one way or another, it was probably going right. to be either them or Konami. Right. Well, they didn't do it with Resident Evil Two, which uh, I'm hoping we actually circle back to that before we end this. Oh, because we were going to got it right here, man. Hey. Got it right here. So, uh, so let's circle Japanese back version. to that right now. Um, well, hold, on, hold, hold on, Z, Z, Z edition? edition. Yeah, that's the that's the Z edition. Oh, nice. I think, I think I think the Street Fighter series is something that could be potentially talked about in here in this discussion as an overrated series Street because. Oh, shut the fuck up, Luke. No, Luke, no, 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 no. Yeah, yes. He's doing that on purpose. He is. Yeah, he's kind of troll now. Um, yeah. so, okay. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo sucks. So Street Fighter 2, obviously, is the type of game that honestly was released almost like it was its own DLC. There was Street Fighter 2. There was Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition Turbo, Super, Super Turbo. It was just ridiculous. And it's hilarious because just last year there was, what, Super Street Fighter 2 Collection for the Switch and you know, all these systems, and it's like, good grief, they're still milking the same Street Fighter 2 game with slightly new additions, a couple new characters, more moves, whatever. It's, it's Heck, insane. Even, even the Switch got a, you know, a Street Fighter 2 Turbo yeah. edition. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, and, I mean, like, that was the big, like, launch, and one of the big launch announcements was like, hey, we're getting a Street Fighter game. It's I like, know. Yeah, that was such the a same a Street Fighter game you've had for 20 years. Well, they did just get that collection edition, so now there's finally an actual Street Fighter 3 that's yeah, not an Yeah, and that's the console. one that they should have just waited to make instead of trying to get everyone to pay for yep. that other Street Fighter game. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I'm a little surprised there hasn't been a Street Fighter 4 around. What? Street Fighter and Josh just completely like, cut out here. Uh, he was like, mm. I can't mm. So he's let's he's right though. Street Fighter Resident Evil. Street Go Fighter ahead. Four did do that though, where it's like you've got Street Fighter Four, Street Fighter Four Arcade Edition. There's five like different five versions. Of them. Yeah, five, yeah. Oh. five Street yeah, Fighter Four. And, and, and they swore they weren't going to do that either. They Saying like, oh, we're just going to release Street Fighter Four, but I think the I think the thing that they were trying to do. Am I cutting out really bad still, or am I okay? It's, it's kind of going in and out. It's a better. Oh, yeah. This is the worst. Okay, yeah. so anyway, I think what Capcom was doing with Street Fighter Five was kind of copying what Microsoft and Rare did with the Killer Instinct game, where they were releasing, you know, DLC or seasons or whatever. Because King of or Killer Instinct was initially just like a free game. And Josh cut off. For like, and stuff like that. Street Fighter Five came out kind of the same way, where it was like, oh, you got 12 characters. And it's like, well, that's cool. And then, you know, six months down the road, you've got 22 characters or whatever. Street Fighter Five is pretty upfront about that, too, where they're like, you know, you're basically getting the, you know, they, they likened it to the foundation of a house. Yep. And they're like, you know, you're getting the bare bones foundation, and we're going to, you know, flesh it out later. And it's like, okay, that's great. I'm going to wait and pick it up when you dump the full version on us two years later. You know, that's... You know, you really want to tell me that up front? Yeah. What happened? Are you guys still there? Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I, think everybody, I think everybody's like dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is like moment of silence. For the, well, street, also, for the street Fighter series. Yep. Okay, so did Esteban go? Did we get a well, I'm going to say, to wrap things up, to wrap things up, uh, and Resident Evil 2 sucks. 
<laughs> right here, bud. Right here. <laughs> no, I have no, no, no. I, I, I have, I have no uh, horse in this race. So I, I'm I, curious I, to hear how you guys feel. But I don't, I don't even. I, know. I've been waiting. You never, uh, you never played the original one, Esteban. I played um, the, yeah, I played Resident Evils, but I don't know about this new version, so I can't. I don't know if it's, you know, it's I, good. If you like the original too, I think, I think it does it justice, um, while actually giving it life with. All new gameplay. It and, adds uh, it adds enough, but not enough to like change what Resident Evil Two was. Right. The feel so you're saying there. it keeps it keeps the essence. Yep. And yeah. Whatever that. Yeah. And my yeah. my big what about thing, the controls. That would be, I guess, the next they, big. They, you have two choices. You have a uh, modern control scheme and, and then a the classic. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I, I tank controls for me aged so poorly. I hate yeah. going back and playing games like Mega Man Legends right. or the old Resident Evil where it's like who thought this was good but but that was the thing that yeah. was what games were yeah. and we were at the time we were used to it like I was used yeah. to the tank controls and then like when this new one came out it was so fluid and so easy to play that I was like shit how did I ever enjoy that back then you know <laughs> yeah. like, was... well, I think it, you know and it, it, it did the same thing with four too where you you're, you're able to line up these headshots like really quickly you know, and it, which was good because they were kind of necessary late game. But, you know, now it's like, you know, Leon has like a BB gun pistol. So they don't, you know, they don't kill anything. But I've been waiting for Resident Evil 2 since they announced that they were going to do it again. Like, that's always been my favorite one in the series. And it was, it was, I don't pre order games. I pre ordered this one because like, mm. it was like, I have to have this. You know, it's just so many, so many memories of such a great game growing up, and to have a new, oh, have a new take on it is so just been that you know, to me would be interesting because I don't know about this, but how many people who are buying this are literally people like you? This is really about going back to something they loved, and how many pe people are? Are there any people who are buying it and it's they've never played it, they just heard about it? I'm I mean, sure. Is that a yeah, I, I, I'm pretty I, sure. I'm sure. To see too, because does made... Resident Evil have like any kind of like you know when I I don't know when I talk to kids or not kids, but you know young folks, I don't know they may have heard of something, but they never played it. I think so they're, it's like, because they have all the Resident Evil movies too. Yeah, they're they're probably oh, the movies. Movie. Uh, yeah. you know, and I'm guessing they're, they're targeting a lot of people because I think they've sold like three million copies since oh, it's wow. been released and that was yesterday so who knows how many right. more they've yeah. sold since then so there's got to be a whole new market that's seeing this and they're like all right well i want to see what this this yeah. shit is about right and they're yeah. buying into it yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm also worth noting that that game came out on a few different platforms and there's people who could have bought it used or played a friend's copy or whatever else as well because that came out on what gamecube resident evil 2 came out on as well gamecube playstation Nintendo all, 64 64 game.com <laughs> Oh yeah, Wait, that, that was a, right. There was a mm -hmm. Nintendo. No, it was not. The N64 version is good. It actually has. It's, you can use third-person controls. On it it's actually want. on yep. that. It's actually on that <laughs> shelf behind me, right there. It's actually yeah, a it technical well. marvel. But, for yeah, it's, it's, it's it's one of those games where it's like you. They fit two CDs worth of stuff. It's most, the one you know, big ass cartridge. Down. But the fact yeah. that it's on one cartridge and it's like this is still a, a playable game that you can with cutscenes, mind you, and the models really? look a little better. I think they cut out one cutscene. That's it, though. They kept yeah. all the other ones. Yeah, but it's like you, you there's have, no battle mode either. You have to imagine you the, the space constraints from going with from a double disc setup to a cartridge. Yes, you know it's like especially that, with the expense of that cartridge. Oh, that is just an impressive thing. It's it's up there with yeah. Doom on the Super Nintendo for me, or Street Fighter Alpha Two on the uh, SNES, where it's like this shouldn't be possible. Well, but it, it, if you think about it, now that it was a double disc game, but Mega Man Legends and a few other PlayStation games that were originally made as PlayStation games did get ported over to the Nintendo 64. And oh, one yeah. other game that we kind of forgot about, or not I forgot about, but it's worth noting that was brought up before, was the original Metal Gear Solid was supposed to be on the N64 as well. I'm not sure if anybody remembers that. And then Sony worked out an exclusivity deal for it. Yep. Wow. And they were wow. like, well, fuck it. We'll take this extra hundreds of thousands of dollars just to keep it on this system. Mm -hmm. Fine. It's, yeah, we can fit more on here now. And we're getting paid more. Yep. Because they, they, they probably <laughs> were going to make like a baseline 
game, right? So that when they yeah. ported it to N64, it wasn't like, you know? Yeah. So I mean, I'm you... guessing that they were able to, you know, well, they were like, screw it. Like you said, you know, we'll just go ahead and add all kinds of shit to it now because now we have the space to do it. Well, yeah, and it's like, you know, the, the Mega Man on the 64, the Mega Man Legends port or whatever, has that, like, thick, impenetrable fog because the draw distance is so bad. Yeah. You know, but it, it, I mean, it's not a bad game if you like Mega Man Legends. It's just definitely not the version you're going to want to pick up. Yeah, yeah, the problem with Legends is they used a smaller cartridge than Resident Evil 2. I think it's like half the ROM size mm. or something. So you got yeah. muddy textures, the um, the audio quality. They have all the clips, but they sound Yeah, awful. they sound yeah. terrible. I think the only good thing they added was analog control. That was it. Yeah, that was nice to not have to use the, the dual analog tank control setup that they had for legends hmm. i don't think dan mentioned uh dan did you mention alone in the dark in the beginning of this? I, I did yeah and it just had so to i have that series. the only version i have right now i guess i have a pc you know version or whatever but i i, I have a 3do version and it's i haven't it. played it in a million years and talk about ridiculous controls i'm gonna go and i'm gonna have to go and play that just to see how because i remember I don't know, 15 years ago, saying, oh, this isn't so bad. I don't know how I feel about it now. <laughs> and that's that's the feeling that you have when you go back to a lot of those old survival horror games that have tank yeah. controls. Is it, it, It's a lot worse than you remember it being most of the time. So yeah. Yeah. It, They did not age well, and no. we, we came up with better solutions, definitely for the better. I loved Alone in the Dark you know, back in the yeah. day. The other day, yeah. I just popped it into the 3DO, you know, just to, like, check mm. it out. I'm like... All right, I'll I'll play a little bit, you know, a few minutes here and there. And I was like, "Fuck, man, these controls suck. Every, every <laughs> bow is shit." I'm like, done. Yep. Just turn it off. <laughs> yeah, what I considered like a nice atmosphere, like I like the at, you know, it was what I was trying to do. But games have definitely, I feel like the one thing I'm missing out with modern games is they can create an atmosphere and a feeling so well now. Mm -hmm. Things that I would have loved years ago, but just just. Or maybe it wasn't the budget or there wasn't the talent or wasn't whatever if you, soundscape if you I don't still know want what it was. A, if you still want like a lovecraft style game though yeah yeah man there you go like, yeah you know and it's it was like 10 bucks <laughs> yeah yeah it, even, but it's so, like they did it and they did it with better controls you know it's you're not fumbling exactly. around trying to go eh, 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 eh. yeah <laughs> you know oh, i wish uh Fatal Frame would get the Resident Evil treatment, you know, like the old uh, one and two. Awesome. Yeah, it's like yeah. The series enough, now. Though. You know, Silent Hill would be cool too if we're if we're just going with. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, like dude, realistically, Silent that something that could happen. <laughs> Silent Hill two though is a top tier game. Yes, Silent Hill two. I freaking my brother and I talk about um, freaking out. My brother and I played that. We would only play it in the middle of the night. We were dying, and we had no spoilers and stuff. So when something freaky happened, we're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like I'm telling you, like I felt like a, a little baby. I was like biting my hand, and I'm like, "Don't go there! Don't do it!" <laughs> and so, like that would be. Uh, I know we're all jaded, and, and, and games have gotten even more extreme and yeah. bizarre. Try to shock you, but that was something going through that and just being like, "Oh my god." Yeah, I, I remember talking with uh, one of the younger guys that I work with, and we were talking about Resident Evil because I, Resident Evil 7 had just come out at the time. And I mentioned basically, you know, shitting myself when you get to that part where, like, the, the zombie turns around from eating and, like, looks at you or the the dogs jump in through the window. Yeah. And, if you know, you look up – you looked up videos of that now, and it's like, pfft, you know, this is, this is nothing. This is, you know right. – yeah, it's and I'm like, at, you have no idea because at the time this was this was freaky stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's all about catching you off guard. And Esteban, yeah. one other game oh, that you can add to yeah. your eventual to playlist is Deadly Premonitions, which was on the PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. It's a weird, almost David Lynchian yet Ooh. Japanese mixed uh, survival horror game. And I think you'd have a lot of fun with it. 
I'm absolutely unlike Dragon Quest, which I never. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say put it put it on the list behind Dragon Quest Five. Oh, it it above <laughs> Deadly Premonitions is going above Dragon Quest. It, 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 yeah, I, based on what you're saying here, I think you'll really like it. Yeah, awesome, cool. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. That's cool. All right, so we are a little bit over an hour five minutes here, and it's about time to wind the show down. Josh, if you're audible, do you have any last words? Um, I think an overrated series is Parasite Eve. Otherwise, I have nothing else. I I think uh, I I, I kind of like the Parasite Eve series, but I don't think it's so do I. I don't think it's that highly rated either. I, yeah, I don't think it's rated. Still much. rather under the radar. Yeah, Dude, I, yeah. Third, I think it was third telling. Third birthday I, is. I imported a I imported a PlayStation like a decade back, and the guy threw in in a plastic bag the discs to Parasite Eve, and I'm like, okay, so obviously you think a lot about this game. It's a, it's a good game. It it's is. I didn't mind it, but I I'm not sure I'd like you know this is the hill I want to die on. Parasite Eve is awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I would love a remaster of that. Actually, that would be awesome. Parasite Eve is it. is interesting because it's pretty much got you guys all fooled. It's basically just Quest 64 with pretty graphics and a different anime style. Oh, don't, don't, I don't know. I, I didn't have an N64. So. It is it's the same battle system. Quest, same Quest 64 has got to be the worst piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, when I when I got rid of my sixty four stuff, somebody had asked about that. They were like, you know, what's that one? Can I have that one? And I'm like, dude, I can't even give this to you in good conscience. I took it out, I took it out like in good conscience. It's like here, take game. Superman sixty four and leave. I, I took I took the game out back, got a sledgehammer out of the garage, and just bashed it into the concrete. And it's that's the most satisfaction I've ever gotten from that game. It's appropriate. It is. It's a fucking terrible game. All right. All right. That's pretty much my last word. Other than, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at underscore Joshua Turbo. Don't forget the underscore as it is the most important underscore on all the internet. That's about all I got. Okay, Saramaro, what about you? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think that uh, overrated or not, Resident Evil 2 is a really good game and everyone should check it out. Cool. Connor. I just want to encourage everybody to support the free the Yuki art book movement. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> D don't worry. If he puts it up there, someone will load an N64 mini with a free copy of it on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Did you guys see that? Uh, so next off, Lukester? Uh, not too much, but... Um, you know, if you can't get into the tank controls, definitely play Resident Evil 2 on the N64. It's definitely a port worth checking out. And Esteban? Uh, not much. I hope uh, I'm here next time. And uh, We did too. Yeah, we, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I don't know. If, I think you did this last week, the PCFX uh, stuff. If I am on in the future, it, it doesn't matter when. Uh, some, I might have just a few words about the implosion and death of that form. Would you and like to speak to that at all now? No, <laughs> yeah. no, I, 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 no. I, we I lost really it. don't have a, anything to say now, but I know I want to say something at some point. But you got the floor and go. <laughs> You're not right. on the spot or anything. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh looks like he's back here, so about, it's about time to wrap. I am. Up. Yeah. That's pretty terrible. I'm sorry. My connection must be the worst ever. The all worst. right, thirty-two mode. <laughs> I, th I think he can blame the incoming like 10 feet of snow and wind for that one. Yeah, probably. I, I, I blame White Castle on the wind, though, but nonetheless, no, it's about you time to wrap the show off. <laughs> <laughs> and before we do go, though, Esteban, can you show us what, you, what, what room you're in right now? What the throne? Oh, sure. Yeah. So the big surprise is the only place I could find an internet connection. I've been crouching in front of the toilet <laughs> this whole time. Here we go. This is it's amazing. Yeah, this sir. is my view the entire time. This is my view, staring at the yeah. toilet. Oh, actually, it's more like this. There we go. So, yeah, Sarah Marrow, if you ever need um, fun printing the Yuki art book, you can always go use Esteban's toilet paper. It's cheap printing paper for sure. Esteban. I, I, I heard like half of, that, half of that. I heard Yuki and toilet paper. <laughs> Well, that's that's about the gist of it. But, I, <laughs> <laughs> but, but 
<laughs> By the way, Saru, I hear that you're doing a male spinoff of uh, your PC Engine game about Luke. It's called FX Unit Lukey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Alright, go to sleep. Dan, it's time to go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> Time out right. corner. Go to sleep, Dan. Go to sleep. Alright, guys. Anyway, night, thank guys. you. Thank you guys for being a part of the show. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Your midweek addiction is um over with. So good luck with the rest of your things and be good. Good night, guys. Goodbye. Play Fortnite. <laughs> 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 Get out.